welcome to the news on Canal 2 at 4. This day, the 10th day of April 2017, I am Ellie Smith. The headlines. Tempers flirt more. St staff of the Douala Greater City Council are on strike. Why? Some claim they are denied the social security insurance schemes and many other advantages. Palm Sunday was celebrated in Yaoundé like everywhere in the Christian world, and Beatrice Ngamo will be telling us more. While in Douala, the international airport has yet has been closed down for transport once again. Those were the headlines. As you heard at the beginning of this news, some staff delegate of the Douala City Council have gone on strike. They claim the health insurance scheme being provided to others and denied to some. In one word, they are discriminatory. D. Morin was there and brought back this report. Tempers flirt Monday March 10 at the Douala City Hall with some staff delegates blocking the main entrance, adding extra padlocks to the main gate, preventing the workers from getting into their offices. Activities were paralyzed in the early hours of the morning. The staff delegates are asking for health insurance, claim it is their right and that so many people have died due to their inability to provide for health care. The staff delegates equally frowned at what they describe as discrimination at the Douala Urban Council Health Insurance Policy where only selected few are so far benefited. <laughs> Questioning the government delegates on the strike action, Frickston and Tony said the strike was uncalled for, though it is an old problem which management is handling. A crisis meeting was summoned to look into the problem. Incident to order here in Douala, it is the international airport that will be closed today, April 10th to the 25th of April. This closure is a second in the space of one year. What will they be doing this time around? Divine Tarike has more. Beginning this April 10th and up until April 25, 2017, flights into and out of Cameroon's most busy airport in Douala will be disrupted as a result of rehabilitation works on the facilities to runways. A tweet posted on the web page of the state-run Cameroon Radio and Television at the weekend, stipulates that no planes will land or take off from the aerodrome between 4 a.m. and midday on April 10, and between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. from April 11 to 25. Several airlines companies operating within the country's airspace have been notifying their passengers of the interruption which obliges a rescheduling of flights. It is worth noting that in March last year, the Douala airport was shut down for three weeks for restoration works on the same runways and hangars. The government of Cameroon through the National Airports Management Authority Aeroport du Cameroon announced the works were undertaken thanks to a 30 billion safe franc funding from the French Development Agency. No formal reasons have been furnished to explain why, barely one year later, the runways are again under repairs. From one under problems to the other this time around, it concerns lawyers, practitioners of the common law in the northwest and southwest regions, I expected to resume work on the 2nd of May this year. In the following paper, Divine Tarinke once again attempts to look at the possibilities of them resuming work and why they have decided to start again. Roughly six months after they began boycotting the law courts in the English-speaking Northwest and Southwest to protest an alleged conspiracy by the government to obliterate and eventually demolish the common law system. Common law practitioners in the two regions are expected to resume work as from May 2, 2017. 
The announcement is contained in a release issued Sunday, April 9, by the president of the Cameroon Bar Council, Jackson Nye Kamga. He says the important milestone in the evolution of the Anglophone crisis, which began in October last year, is the outcome of several behind-the-scenes conclaves held alternatively in Bamenda and Boya since mid-March, followed by working sessions congregating senior common law lawyers and a sprinkling of their junior colleagues. The release, which follows a working session held in Boya on April 8, states that Batonye Nye Kamga has been authorized to pursue negotiations with the government aimed at preserving the common law system of jurisdiction with the expected effective enactment of recommendations submitted to the government. The call-off of the sitting follows the recent announcement of the creation of a common law section at the Supreme Court as well as the advanced school of administration and magistracy, as well as the planned recruitment of English-speaking legal personnel. While in Yaoundé, Christians entered into the mystery of passion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ yesterday, Sunday. Palm Sunday, Beatrice Ngamo tells us, marks the triumphal entry of Christ in Jerusalem. Beatrice Ngamo. St. Augustine Parish, Nguso, symbolism of the Christian faith, Palm Sunday, ushering into the Holy Week, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Faithfuls acclaim his grandeur, brandishing palms, singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David. <laughs> After 40 days of preparing the body, through prayers, penitence, and sharing, the Christian community is getting set to commemorate with the church the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Christ enters Jerusalem, the holy city, where he will die and resurrect. The priest of the St. Augustine Parish, Ngusun Yaounde, calls on faithfuls to put into synergy their faith in memory of the victory of our Savior, asking them to follow in his passion, to take part in his resurrection and life. I ask my uh, Christian to think about that we are suffering, about sufferings and about joy, because our suffering brings us joy. The suffering of Christ is our suffering, and the joys which come after this suffering bring us joy, because after the suffering, Christ will surise, and this surise will help us to be in the joy, the joy of God. That means we all say know that our life is through sufferings and joy. It's to know we are sinners, but the Lord do not leave us in our sin, but rather he gives us life, the joy of this Sunday. Well, here in Douala, youth of all zones of the Archdiocese of Douala met at the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral to celebrate the 18th edition of Youth Diocese Day in the city. Lorian Gamo was there and brought back this report. Youths of all parishes of the Archdiocese of Douala met at the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral. The purpose was to celebrate the 18th edition of the Youth Diocese Day in Douala. This year's edition was under the theme God's Manifestation in the Sacrament, John chapter 6, verse 54 to 55. That the church is the presence of God in the universe. Celebrating Mass for young people, it means that God is manifesting in a special way, showing himself through what uh, we hear from the scriptures and especially what uh, the Archbishop and the, the youth chaplains are doing. In fact, uh, it was not only that, there was also spiritual nourishment for these children. Prizes were given to youths who won the different competitions earlier organized. There were also other parallel activities with aim attracting more youths in the house of God. Just to make the event more colorful and more active because some will come because they were there in sport, some will come because they were there in other things. And when they're here today, we will take the opportunity to give them the word of God. This youth day was put in place by His Eminence Cardinal Christian Tumi in 1999 after being inspired from the World Youth Day. The much more sad note where a 14-year-old boy in the town of Edea has died of electrocution 
when he climbed a mango tree to harvest some fruits. His name, Felix Pankler. But that same mango tree has already killed his elder brother. More with The Banya. inanimate body of Felix Parkland was found last Sunday morning at St. Palme's neighborhood in Edea. Late Felix, 14 years old, is reported to be a student at Government Balingua High School Edea 1. Eyewitnesses account that he was electrocuted while trying to climb the mango tree. Many hypotheses were brought forth by the sympathizers as to what could be the cause of the young boy's death. Could it be that he stumbled and fell or that it was a trap set by the store owner who complained about several theft incidents in his store. Three days ago, I caught a child on top of the zinc of my store and I got him well beaten. And if I had reported the theft, I wouldn't have been able to catch him. It was during the day and it was a neighbor's child. End of except. This is not the first time that Pa Alec has lost a child on this mango tree. The first time, it was one of his brothers who fell off the tree. We were there in the bar drinking, and when we rushed the boy to the hospital, he died. The state council of Edea came down to the scene and summoned the store owner for questioning as investigations continue. Well, it is on that third note that we'll be putting an end of to our news at four here on Canal Do English. But please do not go away. Stay tuned to more programs coming up will be Obusi with Senator Cletus, and here at 8 p.m. will be Annette Efeti Esome. Tomorrow is another day, God willing.